Ange Aikardo ang inyong host para sa press briefing na ito. Ang event na ito ay naka-livestream po sa PSA Facebook page at ang mga updates naman ay tweeted sa PSA Twitter account gamit ang hashtag PSA gamit gamit ang Secretary Sara Lynn Daway Docanes, OIC Director Frances Fatima Cabana, at Assistant Director Melanie Grace Quintos. Mula naman po sa PSA, kasama natin ngayon ang OIC Deputy National Statistician ng Sectoral Statistics Office, si Dr. Divina Gracia L. Del Prado. Kasama rin po natin ang Assistant National Statistician for the Macroeconomic Account Service under Sectoral Statistics Office. We have Ms. Vivian R. Ilarina and Assistant and OIC Assistant, uh, sorry, and OIC ng uh, Economic Sector Statistics Service, si Ms. Rachel Lapsa. Ngayon, atin na pong pakinggan ang ulat ni PSA Undersecretary Dennis S. Mapa. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Ang Philippine Statistics Authority mag-uulat ng estado ng ekonomiya ng bansa sa unang quarter ng taong 2023. Ang Gross Domestic Product o GDP ng Pilipinas ay nagtala ng pagtaas na 6.4% sa unang quarter ng taong 2023. Ito ay mula sa naitalang 8% sa pagtaas sa parehong quarter noong nakalipas na taon. Ito din ang pinakababang paglago matapos ang putong quarter nang magsimula ang pagbangon ng bansa mula sa pandemya noong ikalawang quarter ng taong 2021. Ang gross national income ay nagtala ng pagtaas na 9.9% sa unang quarter ng taong 2023. Gayun din, ang net primary income from the rest of the world ay tumaas ng 81.2% sa unang quarter ng taong 2023. Sa seasonal adjusted national accounts, ang unang quarter ng taong 2023, ang GDP ay nagtala ng quarter on quarter ng pataas na 1.1%. Sa kabilang dako, ang GNI ay nagtala ng 2.3% quarter on quarter na paglago sa parehong period. Sa mga pangunahing sektor na ekonomiya na agriculture, forestry and fishing, industry at services ay nagsipagtala ng pagtaas na 2.2%, 3.9% at 8.4% respectively. Sa seasonal adjusted GDP, ang industry ay lumago ng 2.1% sa quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Sinundan ito ng agriculture, forestry, and fishing na nagtala ng pagtaas ng 1.4% at services na tumaas ng 0.7% sa quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Sa unang quarter ng taong 2023, ang per capita GDP ay tumaas ng 5.2%. Ito ay mas mababa kaysa sa naitalang pagtaas na 6.7% sa parehong quarter noong nakalipas na taon. 
ang per capita GNI at per capita household final consumption expenditure ay parehong nagtala ng pagtaas na 8.6% at 5.1% respectively. Sa naitalang pagtaas ng GDP na 6.4% sa unang quarter ng taong 2023, ang services ang nagtala ng may pinakamataas na contribution na 5.0 percentage points. Ito ay sinundan ng industry na nagtala ng contribution na 1.2 percentage points habang ang agriculture, forestry, and fishing ay nakapag-ambag ng 0.2 percentage points sa kabuwang pagtaas ng GDP. Sa labing-anim na sektor ng GDP, ang other services katulad ng arts, entertainment, recreation at iba pa ay nagtala ng may pinakamataas na paglago na nasa 36.5% sa unang quarter ng taong 2023. Ito ay sinundan ng mga sumusunod. Accommodation and food service activities na tumaas ng 26.9%, transportation and storage na tumaas ng 14.3%, at construction na tumaas ng 10.8%. Ang mga sektor na may pinakamalaking contribution sa pagtaas ng GDP ay ang mga sumusunod. Wholesale and retail trade, repair of motor vehicles and motorcycles na nagambag ng 1.1 percentage points. Financial and insurance activities na nagambag ng 1.0 percentage point at other services na nagambag ng 0.61 percentage point. Sa demand side, ang volubles ang nagtala ng may pinakamataas na paglago na nasa 55.8% sa unang quarter ng taong 2023. Ito ay sinunda ng mga sumusunod. Imports of services na tumaas ng 22%, export of services na tumaas ng 19.5%, at construction na tumaas ng 14.3%. Sa unang quarter ng taong 2023, ang mga sektor Nang may pinakamalaking contribution sa pagtaas ng GDP sa expenditure side ay ang mga sumusunod. Household final consumption expenditure na nagambag ng 4.8 percentage points, construction na nagambag ng 1.7 percentage points, at government final consumption expenditure na nagambag ng 0.9 percentage point. Ang Philippine Statistics Authority ay malugod na nagpapasalamat sa inyong pagdalo sa National Accounts Press Conference para sa unang quarter ng taong 2023. Inaasahan naman namin ang ating muling pagkikita sa ikasampo ng Agusto 2023 para sa pag-uulat ng Estado na Ekonomiya para sa ikalawang quarter ng taong 2023. Salamat at magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat po, Yusek Mapa, para sa ulat ng 2023 First Quarter Performance of the Philippine Economy. Ngayon, atin naman pong pakinggan si Secretary Arsenio M. Balisakan para sa pahayag ng NEDA ukol sa 2023 First Quarter Performance of the Philippine Economy. Colleagues in government, Recording in progress. Uh, members of the media, fellow Filipinos, good morning. I am pleased to inform you that our gross domestic product or GDP in the first quarter of 2023 grew by 6.4% as the Philippine Statistics Authority reported. This growth performance is higher than the median estimates of analysts reported by the media and well within the government's target of 6.0% to 7.0% for 2023. Moreover, among major emerging economies in the region that have uh, released their G uh, first quarter 2023 real GDP uh, growth so far, the Philippines grew the fastest, followed by Indonesia, 5.0%, China, 4.5%, and Vietnam, 3.3%. Uh, the country's growth is also more rapid than the forecasted First quarter growth rates for Malaysia, 4.9%, India, 4.6%, and Thailand, 2.8%. 
While this quarter's growth figure is lower than the 8.0% year-on-year growth rate recorded in the first quarter of 2022, we need to exercise caution in inter interpreting this as a slowdown since the previous year's growth came from a low base. Rather, the economy is normalizing its previous trend. The better-than-expected first quarter performance this year implies that we are returning to our high growth trajectory despite the various challenges and head headwinds we have faced. However, we have much more work to realize our social and economic transformation agenda toward a prosperous, inclusive, and resilient Philippines. On the demand side, gross fixed capital formation or investment expanded at a rapid pace of 10.4% year on year faster than household final consumption expenditure, 6.3%, and government's final consumption expenditure, 6.2%, reflecting a robust public construction performance primarily driven by the road infrastructure and railway projects of the Departments of Public Works and Highways and the Department of Transportation. However, exports of goods and services only increased by 0.4% in the face of weak global demand while imports of goods and services rose by 4.2%. On the supply side, all major economic sectors recorded positive growth this quarter. Agriculture grew by 2.2%, industry grew by 3.9%, and services saw a significant increase of 8.4% with the full resumption of economic activity. Agriculture's performance this quarter primarily due to favorable weather conditions, is a promising beginning to 2023, especially given the expected challenge of El Nino later in the year. We have experienced El Nino before and are confident that with adequate planning and preparation, we can successfully navigate it again this year. The performance of the sectors translates into the latest labor force statistics, showing improvements not only in terms of a lower unemployment rate from 5.8% in March 2022 to 4.7% in March 2023, but also in terms of a lower underemployment rate, notably the invisible underemployment rate, which declined from 5.6% in March 2022 to 3.5% in March 2023. Recall also that the sectors of transportation and storage, accommodation and food service activities, wholesale and retail trade, and construction are among those with the highest year-on-year -year increases in employment in March 2023, indicating that strong pent-up demand persisted in the first quarter of this year. Despite this rather auspicious beginning for 2023, we in the economic team and the whole government have to remain vigilant. While we remain focused on impl implementing our social and economic transformation agenda, we also stand ready to respond to the, to the shocks and risks to our growth outlook, both domestic and external, foreseen and unforeseen. High inflation remains a challenge, and the Banco Central ng Pilipinas moved to raise its key policy rates to anchor inflation expectations and ensure price stability may dampen future growth. But the improvement in business climate can counter this unintended effect. Still, the headline inflation rate appears to have reached its highest point, decelerating to 6.6% in April 2023 from 7.6% in March and 8.6% in February 2023. We anticipate this downward trend to continue as inflation eventually eases toward the government's target range by the fourth quarter of 2023. Indeed, the latest inflation report numbers look promising. Food inflation declined from 9.5% in, in March to 8.0% in April 2023, while non-food inflation declined from 6.3% in March 2023 to 5.5% in April. 
ensuring that we not only go back to our high growth path, but more importantly, achieve significant social and economic transformation by the end of this administration, so what's involves full implementing the strategies laid out in the Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028. The strategies call for developing and protecting the capabilities of Filipinos and transforming our production sectors to generate more quality jobs and competitive products while ensuring a conducive overall investment environment in terms of governance and government policies. In developing and protecting the capabilities of Filipinos and enhancing the prospects for sustained growth, it is crucial to address the rising cost of food and energy, especially since this disproportionately adversely affect the welfare of low-income and vulnerable individuals, as food items tend to dominate their consumption patterns. Through the recently approved Interagency Committee on Inflation and Market Outlook, we endeavor to promptly anticipate food and energy market conditions and generate evidence-based and timely recommendations to the President and the Cabinet, especially in light of the looming threat of El Nino and our food and energy supplies. Our policy prescriptions shall be a balancing act, considering the overall impact on different sectors of the economy, including local producers, and consumers. Despite various risks and challenges, the economic outlook for the Philippines in the near and medium term remains solid. We are confident that we will reach our target for this year of 6.0 to 7.0 percent growth rate and 6.5 to 8.0 percent for 2024 to 2028. The Filipino people can rest, rest assured that we are committed to achieving rapid, sustained, and inclusive economic growth. We strongly encourage everyone to contribute to building a prosperous, inclusive, and resilient Philippines. Maraming salamat at mabuhay. Maraming salamat po, Secretary Balisakan. Now, let us proceed to the open forum. But uh, before we proceed, Nais po muna namin paunlakan at pasalamatan ang lahat ng press at media partners na kasama po natin ngayon dito sa press briefing. Para po sa maayos na pagsasagawa ng ating open forum, narito po ang ilang mga paalala. Para po sa ating mga online participants, maaari po ninyong gamitin ang raise hand feature ng Zoom kung nais po ninyong direktang magtanong sa ating mga resource persons. Kapag kayo po ay natawag upang magtanong, Pakisabi po muna ang inyong pangalan at organisasyong inyong kinabibilangan bago po ninyo sabihin ang inyong tanong. Maaari rin po kayong magpadala ng inyong mga katanungan uh, gamit ang ating Zoom chat box. Siguraduhin po lamang na nakalagay ang inyong pangalan at ang organisasyong kinabibilangan. Panatilihin pong nakamute ang inyong mga mic kung kayo po ay hindi pa natatawag upang magtanong. Para naman po sa ating mga on-site participants, pakitaas lamang po ang inyong mga kamay. Ang inyong kamay, kung nais po ninyong magtanong sa ating mga resources. Recording resources. stopped. Kapag kayo po ay natawag upang magtanong, pakisabi, pakisabi po ang inyong pangalan at organization bago po ninyo banggiting ang, ang inyong tanong. Okay, para po sa kopya ng mga press kits, ipapadala po namin ito sa, sa inyo via online uh, through email. Recording in progress. Samantala, ang printout po ng inyong press kit ay ibibigay po ng aming staff para sa ating mga on-site media participants. Ngayon, handa na po tayo sa open forum. Uh, maybe we can begin po with the advanced questions sent by our media partners. The first question po is from Ms. Eileen Mencias of Abante. Uh, this one is for Yusek Mapa. Uh, Yusek, the 2.1% growth in agri refers to the value of production. What is the growth of agri in volume, uh, in volume terms and how big a factor was the increase in prices to the growth in the value of agricultural production? 
Thank you very much, Eileen. Um, you're referring to uh, yung report namin kahapon, ano, yung value production in agriculture and fisheries that uh, increased as a first quarter ng 2.1%. Uh, ito ay constant prices din. Ano? So uh, the price uh, prices here are already uh, adjusted. But just uh, to answer your question, yung, uh, there are certain commodities na ito yung malaking contribution and both sa value and sa volume. No? There are four. Ang isa ay yung uh, palay production natin. Uh, palay production uh, year on year sa first quarter increased by 5.2%. So ito yung isa doon sa pinakamalaking uh, nag-contribute sa increase sa uh, agricultural sector. Uh, pumangalawa yung corn production. Uh, this is volume production. Tumaas din siya ng 3.2% sa first quarter uh, versus the uh, number in the first quarter of last year. Sa livestock naman, ang nag-contribute ay yung hog production na nagtaas ng 5.2% sa volume. At uh, yung chicken, yung poultry natin, na tumaas din ng 3.2%. So, uh, ito yung uh, apat na major uh, commodities na nag-contribute doon sa pagtaas sa volume production at the same time doon sa ating value production that was reported yesterday increasing at 2.1%. Thank you. Thank you po, Yusek Mapa. For the second adv advanced question, this is for Secretary Balisakan. Secretary, how do you see the possible slowdown in the U.S. and China affecting the Philippines Specifically, its impact on trade, employment, remittances, and growth in general. In the most recent uh, uh, review of the uh, uh, macroeconomic assumptions and, uh, and targets uh, by the DBCC, no? uh, we have already taken into account these uh, developments in the uh, in the US and China and the uh, and in the global economy in general particularly the growth slowdown and taking all uh, uh, information into account we this we agreed we decided to keep the the growth rate for this year at 6 to 7% as i reported earlier and and uh, uh, and 6.5 to 8% for uh, 2024 to 2028 so uh, 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 those projections, those targets already take into account the, 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 those developments in the uh, external front. Thank you, Secretary Balisakan. Uh, we have another question for you, you, Secretary. How much has inflation eaten up on the growth of the Philippine economy? Well, um, inflation affects the various sectors uh, uh, of the economy um, in, uh, uh, through different channels. Uh, uh, on the demand side, it can uh, affect uh, uh, high inflation, can reduce the consumer demand, uh, can also uh, affect uh, investment decisions to the extent that uh, inflation uh, or the uh, monetary responses to, to high inflation could trigger, uh, could include uh, uh, tightening of uh, of uh, uh, money supply, no? which will involve uh, typically involves increases in interest rates, no? so that reduces investment. On uh, 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 the supply side, the the uh, high inflation could reduce the investments uh, uh, could, uh, in various sectors of the economy because of the prospects that uh, or. Uh, uh, expectations that uh, demand will be lower and uh, costs will be higher. And so uh, uh, that's how, uh, uh, in fact, that, that the 6 to 7% that we uh, uh, have targeted for this year also takes into account that uh, uh, problems, those problems associated with elevated prices of uh, goods and services. But as I said, uh, we expect those and we have seen in the first uh, in the last three months uh, how those uh, uh, elevated prices have uh, uh, peaked and they have now uh, starting to, to to slow down uh, in terms in terms of the, the growth uh, uh, and and so uh, uh, hopefully that will um, uh, uh, enable uh, uh, our uh, uh, um, consumer public, uh, the, uh, the investing community, uh, um, uh, 
give a better confidence on the economy moving forward. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's. Thank you, po, Secretary Balisakan. Okay, okay, we have here a question sent via Zoom chat. This is for USEC MAPA. Um, USEC MAPA, um, July Rada from Manila Standard today has this question for you. What are the factors that caused a slower growth in the first quarter? Thank you. Uh, on the production side, you know, uh, there there were three items that uh, uh, contributed uh, slow, the slowdown. No? Yung one is mining and quarrying. Uh, ang uh, kanyang growth ay negative, negative 2.2. Uh, public administration and defense, the uh, growth rate is uh, 1.5. And uh, human health and social work activities. The growth rate is uh, higher at uh, 7.5, but the previous growth uh, rates are are actually higher. So, sa production side, ito yung uh, tatlong uh, items uh, na nag-contribute dun sa slowdown in growth uh, for the first quarter 2023. Thank you. Thank you po, Yusek Mapa. Um, okay, uh, we have here um, Mr. Michael Flores raising his hand. Good morning. Uh, Michael Flores of AFP. Uh, Sec RC, um, in previous card here, uh, in previous quarters, we've seen um, consumers, uh, household consumption uh, remain robust despite the, the high inflation, growing at around nine, between 9 and 10%. But uh, in this quarter, we've noticed a slowdown, down to 6.3%. Uh, although it has peaked, uh, I think, in uh, in January of this year. Are you seeing inflation uh, finally you know, eating into the or finally impacting into household consumption and do you expect this to to remain tepid going forward despite the fact that we are seeing inflation slowing down already yeah uh, the high elevated the high prices uh, elevated prices uh, last year um, uh, as you know uh, resulted in uh, in tightening of monetary policy no? uh, so that the interest rates uh, uh, increase that uh, uh, that the effects of those uh, uh, would be felt in later months no? um, and and so perhaps we are starting to to feel that uh, because there are usually some uh, lag effects uh, uh, but then uh, as we said earlier the, the, the fact that uh, this inflation has uh, has begun to come down, and uh, we expect that, that that trajectory to the target rate of two to four percent by by the end of the year, uh, that could uh, build up, uh, rebuild the confidence of the of, of uh, consumers, no, and uh, and the business community, uh, and the, that uh, could get spending again and invest investment. Uh, 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 moving up again, and, and and so it could, you know, the uh, the, the the this uh, it, slow down if you if you want to call it, it's uh, it, that that way. It's it's just a temporary thing, and I think that this uh, favorable investment climate that will uh, come out as a result of the uh, the decrease in inflation will uh, uh, more than outweigh any residual effects of the past uh, uh, increases in interest rates. Or just a very quick follow up. So as we feel um, the tightening of monetary policy find its way into the real economy, when do you expect uh, spending to uh, pick up pace again? Um, do you expect this to come as early as the second quarter, or would you expect it towards the latter half of the year, towards the third or fourth quarter? I, I think it could have uh, probably started already because uh, the, the the labor statistics data, you know, that we the study. Labor statistics last April, you know, we have reached uh, a, quite a low level of, un, uh, of unemployment, and the underemployment rate was actually at its lowest since 2005, no? uh, that, uh, based on our, the, the records that we have. No? Uh, and so it could, uh, you know, um, uh, um, that, that uh, a revival, uh, a resurgence of, of, of demand uh, could, uh, could continue. But again, there, there are uh, as you keep saying, there are uh, there are risks that that we need to watch out. Uh, the El Nino is a is clearly a risk uh, that we have to manage well. Uh, 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 the, uh, 
the global slowdown or, uh, uh, or economic slowdown that we have also mentioned will uh, impact on our uh, exports. Um, uh, so, uh, um, but uh, as reported earlier, uh, much of our growth uh, uh, in, la in the last quarter and in previous uh, years uh, um, is coming from or was coming from the uh, domestic uh, 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 side of the economy, no? it's the uh, the uh, contribution of consumption, uh, contribution of investment, uh, and government expenditures. No, those are the ones driving uh, 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 growth. That that that, that uh, closely about three fourth of the entire uh, of the total growth of the economy is contributed by uh, growth of domestic demand. So we have to, you know, as long as we are able to keep uh, the domestic uh, confidence strong. Uh, I think the economy can can uh, manage to weather the storms. Thank you, sir, and congratulations on finishing your marathon recently. God, thank you. It's the secret. Okay. Um, Miss Shaila Francisco. Uh, during the report for earlier, you mentioned that uh, one of the top contributors to growth by the expenditure is the household final consumption. I just want to ask, ano po yung tingin yung rason bakit na retain yung household spending even after the holiday season? I think as uh, I, we noted in our report, no, there's still much spent up demand there. Uh, as you can see in the the uh, growth in the services uh, sector. The services sector contributed the uh, the, the most no? uh, to the growth. And in that services sector, you see uh, their uh, retail, uh, accommodation, hotels, you know, uh, tourism growing quite uh, robustly. You know, and and so there's still much there. Uh, and actually, um, uh, we haven't uh, that those particular sectors haven't actually yet recovered their uh, pre-pandemic levels, no. So there's still some there. Uh, uh, but then again, uh, I think that uh, for so long as we are able to keep investment coming in uh, and uh, grow, uh, uh, get that employment growing, and especially the quality of employment, I think you, can, you can see that uh, that uh, those sources of demand growth to continue. Thank you, Secretary. Okay, let's entertain the question sent via Zoom chat. Um, this is from Mr. Ted Cordero of GMA News, addressed to Secretary Balisakan. Um, Secretary, is this growth slowdown in the first quarter caused by high inflation? And is the revenge spending phase of Filipinos beginning to ease? One cannot uh, discount the... the, 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 the the uh, slowdown that uh, you have seen uh, uh, in the first quarter uh, is uh, the effect of, or partly an effect of the uh, high inflation elevated price. There, there's quite uh, clear evidence in the literature about the relationship between high prices and between high prices and and, and demand. No? So, um, so when uh, Prices are high. There's less demand, and that's obviously is uh, reflected in the economy. But as I said, also there is also the other offsetting effect, no? Employment, no? Even if as uh, uh, prices high, if the if incomes are rising because of uh, uh, more opportunities for employment or the quality of employment is improving, then uh, somehow households can still uh, uh, manage to increase their uh, consumption level. Of course, their um, Purchasing power is much reduced by inflation, but uh, 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 consumption can can still uh, increase. So um, I think that combination of of uh, decreasing prices that we have uh, or decreasing re uh, inflation rate uh, uh, that we have uh, witnessed in the last three months uh, and that continued robust growth of employment is uh, uh, is a good. Uh, uh, indication for a, a uh, you know for uh, a near term uh, uh, sustained recovery thank you secretary um we have a uh, uh, mr and andrea from bloomberg uh good morning officials sir 
Sir, um, do you have a, can, can you quantify the, how much um, the interest rate hikes have uh, impacted our economy so far for the first quarter? Do you have that figure? I don't have that right now, but we can, you know, I macro, the macroeconomist here, uh, Sarah Dao, I pro, uh, <laughs> can the CDP, uh, transit number for you. Uh, uh, we can uh, do that, but I, as I said, the uh, it's it's not quite direct uh, uh, because the the uh, those effects tend to have uh, uh, immediate uh, and uh, both immediate and uh, and uh, longer term no? effects. Uh, and, and and as I said, the uh, higher interest rates uh, last year. Uh, could have impacted on the, the consumption uh, and investment uh, 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 already this year, no? Uh, and um, uh, there are estimates saying that uh, the, you know it, the, the the effects could be felt within six months or uh, even uh, long a uh, little longer, no? One year, no? but uh, those effects tend to to to, to taper, uh, especially if you are able to rebuild. Uh, Confidence that what uh, 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 what BSP is actually trying to do is to anchor the, the the inflation expectations, and that so that pe people will pass, will see that uh, we are definitely going to a lower uh, inflation, and therefore uh, don't expect any further increases in interest rates. So if that is becomes you know the expectation of the general public, then that fuels uh, uh, you know or builds up consumption spending and investment uh, spending and and sir, sorry to play devil's advocate but um even if inflation is already on a downward trend it's uh, it's still way above the central bank's target right? right and it's very still very elevated so how do you think can um consumption and the demand side hold up in this environment and especially adding also that the pent up demand savings of people is not infinite, right? It's finite. So, how will consumption hold up in in that situation? Yeah. Well, there are really a number of factors that affect consumption at any given point in time. Of course, prices one. The other ones are your incomes. Uh, as you have seen, uh, the uh, employment, uh, the labor market conditions. Uh, the, are improving no? as seen by continuing uh, decline in the unemployment rate. Uh, the, the underemployment rate is also at its lowest level uh, since 20, 2005. So that gives you some, you know, uh, some op uh, indication of opportunities uh, in the labor market. Uh, uh, the other one is that could affect uh, consumption is your, expe your expectations about the future. If you perceive that things will be much better yeah, in the next months in the next year then you know you you, you program your spending uh, and take advantage of opportunities uh, uh, at taking into account that information so that's why the uh, uh, typical policy as the kind of policy that our bsp is pursuing is to you know, build that you know get that that macro that fundamental uh, especially in the, the price level uh, 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 solid so that uh, people can make uh, right decisions uh, because if the prices are you know are fluctuating or increasing persistently then people will tend to uh, postpone their uh, consumption particularly uh, these durable goods uh, um, or even vacations uh, as well as their uh, investment decisions so it's very important that that, that uh, the general public uh, see that the government is doing its best to uh, to anchor the inflation to low levels and 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 that drive uh, uh, expectations uh, toward a better future thank you secretary okay we have miss ditas lopez hi secretary um could you give us some scenarios should the the central bank's key rate continues to rise um can the economy absorb more increases or uh, the high growth trajectory that you mentioned might be at risk thank you so much 
I am not a member of the uh, monetary board, but I, uh, but I, I can, uh, but a student of economics, and I think, uh, you know, I, you don't know very well that uh, uh, prices are major uh, determinants of uh, economic activity, you know? so, and you do know that, uh, that uh, it's, it's stable prices, uh, uh, not uh, rising prices, uh, um, uh, um, influence economic activity you know? uh, and, and investment decisions. Uh, and they used uh, um, uh, monetary, monetary policy as, uh, as, as an instrument to achieve that objective of price stability. You know? uh, so I think that, um, uh, and we have heard the, uh, the governor <laughs> of uh, BSP about uh, what they say that you know, this uh, that if they see that these prices, are, uh, this inflation is is uh, seeing a, 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 a consistent pattern, downward pattern, then they, they may consider uh, the, the, uh, the, the, their uh, monetary policy, you know, uh, perhaps uh, even st stopping the, you know, the uh, for, or further increases uh, the interest rates. Okay, thank you, thank you, Secretary. Um, let's entertain the question sent via Zoom chat. This question is sent by Ms. Kai Ordinario of Business Mirror. The question is for Secretary Balisakan and Yusek Mapa. Uh, first question, labor productivity, um, NS and Secretary, is it enough to merit a wage hike? Okay, I'll repeat the question po. Um, Ms. Kai Ordinario's quest, first question is on labor productivity. Is it enough to merit a wage hike? I guess the question is, has there been an increase in labor productivity to merit a, uh, a wage hike? Um, and I suppose, suppose that since uh, uh, the, uh, growth has been uh, uh, much faster than uh, than. Uh, than labor force growth, uh, that average labor productivity must have been must have been uh, rising. But that's average. No? <laughs> There's a lot of variation across uh, labor types and uh, across industries. No? Uh, so, uh, but our, uh, you know, our, our position is that uh, 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 wage hikes is a uh, kind of a, a, a negotiation between workers and employers. Uh, the labor condition, labor market conditions are so different across the, uh, across industries, across sectors, across types of firms, size of firms, uh, and so it's better that uh, that uh, uh, the, those negotiations live and there. Of course, the government can can step in to set the environment for such negotiations so that the workers are not uh, are not disadvantaged by uh, by. Uh, uh, any power uh, exerted by uh, by their employers. Thank you, Secretary. Okay, the second uh, set of questions again from Ms. Kai. Why is manufacturing growing slower? And is this because of the decline in jobs? What could be the reason for this? And the data. I, I, the yes, my the simple answer from um, our view is that uh, uh, manufacturing is so sensitive to uh, to the global environment uh, for trade and this slowdown in uh, in uh, the global economy has uh, um, significantly impacted on uh, on our major exports particularly uh, since our major exports are semiconductors and electronics and these are the ones that are hardly hardly hit in the uh, global economy. So that's possibly where it's coming from. Um, the other one is uh, perhaps that, uh, of course, the high, high cost of inputs, uh, um, for example, for the food uh, uh, processing, uh, manufacturing sector, uh, as we have seen, uh, uh, agricultural uh, uh, prices, uh, uh, 
have have increased uh, and the cost of in, uh, of inputs for agricultural production have also uh, risen you know with uh, substantially uh, like fertilizers and uh, and uh, sugar is a major uh, a major um, input in many food manufacturing uh, activities and the high high inflation there could could have uh, also uh, reduced the uh, profitability uh, and uh, competitiveness of some of the food manufacturing uh, industries. Uh, just to add the uh, guy to the explanation of Sec RC uh, on the numbers, uh, yung uh, uh, sinabi ni Sec RC na it's basically the exports ano kaya bumaba yung ating uh, manufacturing uh, uh, industry. So I have the numbers here. The exports of goods this quarter declined by negative 15.3% uh, and uh, major contributors uh, are basically our uh, exports. Sem semiconductor declined by 25.2%. Uh, Office equipment uh, declined by 42% and uh, electronic data processing also declined by 27.9%. Uh, so these are on the export side. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary and NS Mapa. Okay, um, we have um, Mr. Jackie. Hi, good morning, Sir Jackie Pascual. So it was mentioned that uh, this growth is the lowest in seven quarters. Uh, yes, the last seven quarters. And Sec, you, also, you mentioned that you don't want to call it a slowdown, but a normalizing. Can you just expound a little, especially given that the last six quarters nasa 7 to 8 percent which parang hindi naman low base uh, just a little explanation sir thank you yeah um well in the uh, in 2021 uh, the quarters there particularly the first the second first two quarters are obviously still uh, the uh, the high growth they observed there were still uh, the, the uh, uh, great a good deal a good part of it is really the low base effect no? uh, uh, but even in the third and fourth quarter as you have seen um, uh, many of the sectors particularly in the services sector uh, were still not or have uh, had not yet recovered the pre-pandemic levels of 2019 so in that sense even though you have seen some growth in the uh, first two quarters of, the, of last year uh, they were uh, when you reach the third and fourth many of the sectors of the economy were still not you know like uh, have not fully recovered from their uh, pre-pandemic levels particularly those in the services sector uh, uh, accommodation in trade in uh, hotels and so on um, um, i said uh, uh, um, it's normalizing because uh, remember in the uh, the, the, the uh, average growth rate uh, for the decade uh, before the uh, pandemic was about 6.3% uh, or 6.4% uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 we, we do think that the economy can sustain that growth and so we are at the, the rate that they were going um, that with 6.4, that's uh, basically going to that long-term growth uh, uh, trajectory. So we can stay there, and uh, of course, our trust is to improve the uh, the productivity potential of uh, um, of, of the economy, uh, and that uh, uh, so that we can even raise that uh, that growth, uh, uh, the potential growth uh, above 6.4. We don't have to stay there at 6.3 or 6.4. We can. Uh, raise that if you are able to invest in in uh, physical infrastructure, in human capital, in in uh, building our institutions, uh, and so on, no? and that would uh, uh, build up uh, uh, the uh, potential GDP growth. So that's uh, 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 my answer to that. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. We have Miss uh, Jackson from Business World. Hello, good morning. My question is for Sec RC. Hi. Uh, what would be the effect of an El Nino shock on GDP growth based on the previous years that uh, the Philippines has been experiencing El Nino? 
um, the El Nino can af um, can affect the economy um, um, in different ways. Uh, the most obvious one is on the production side, especially agriculture. Agriculture is so vulnerable to droughts. Uh, uh, for example, during these strong El Nino years, uh, rice production could decrease by by uh, double digits. No? Uh, uh, I think the highest that ever recorded was something like 20%. No? Uh, 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 but slight El Nino could cause uh, agricultural production to decrease by 1%, 2%. Uh, uh, but I think the... Uh, uh, my what call it blessing in disguise, but uh, the good thing about our economy now is is that uh, agriculture is only now what um, ten percent roughly no, of our uh, national uh, income or GDP. No? So in that sense, uh, uh, contraction of agriculture uh, caused by El Nino may not deeply impact on on, on the economy, although it may deeply impact on and, uh, and households because a large majority uh, you still have a, a, a um, more more than twenty percent of your labor force uh, is located in dependent on agriculture. No? So that's uh, the social implications are are more serious than the economic ones. Uh, I think. Uh, but the the other part of the El Nino is the, the, the if if it impacts your your supply of electricity. You know, when you, to the extent that uh, some of our dams are still dependent on water uh, or, uh, or uh, uh, power plants are dependent on uh, water in the dams, no? um, hydro, uh, hydro power. I think that we have a, a good deal of that in Mindanao. Um, uh, and so it could affect the availability of, uh, of power. Uh, uh, the other um, concerns probably not more, uh, not economic, uh, strictly economic, but more uh, uh, social and is this the effect of, of uh, El Nino uh, and, and health because uh, that's often associated with the uh, with, uh, growth of, you know, with this uh, um, surge of uh, diseases, uh, uh, malaria included. Uh, So yeah, uh, so I, I I I think that we are putting in place that the good thing is we have learned much from uh, uh, the experiences we had with uh, El Nino uh, management, and we do think that uh, we, we are richer in, uh, now with uh, knowledge and information and uh, and processes that we should be able to uh, to do uh, to address the the issue better than in in previous uh, episodes of El Nino. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Okay, for now, uh, we shall accommodate the question sent via Zoom chat. This one is from Ms. Kai Ordinario from Business Mirror. Um, on consumption growth, how much of that is caused by demand and how much is caused by rising commodity prices? I suppose any of our resource persons can answer. Said that already quite uh, extensively. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have other questions to our resource persons? Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Cliff from Nikkei. Um, Secretary, uh, you mentioned that in the first quarter there were still some indications of uh, strong pent up demand, right? Uh, are there indications that? Uh, that there are still pen, there's still pent up demand in the second quarter and the, are, what are those signs that um uh, that we have that that we have that factor that to um deliver a uh, second quarter growth or contribute to second quarter growth uh, it, it, the pent up demand is uh is obviously easing no it's 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 getting uh, weaker uh, but the, as i said there are still sectors uh Particularly in, this, in the services uh, uh, sector, no, where where uh, 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 economic activities have not returned to their pre-pandemic level, and that includes tourism. Uh, of course, mining was mentioned earlier, uh, uh, accommodations, hotels, and so on. So there, 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 there's still 
uh, that much. And what will drive that pent up demand is uh, obviously when the, when that comes with better expectations of employment opportunities. Uh, and the, so, if you read the uh, the the labor statistics, uh, uh, you 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 find that uh, as I said earlier, um, the labor market conditions continue to improve despite the uh, 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 recent uh, uptick upticks in in in, in prices. No, um, so um, I think it's not uh, pent up demands that is grow that's going to drive consumption consumption moving forward. It's uh, because but it's going to be the growth in in incomes, the growth in uh, and in the expectations that. Um, uh, that conditions will be better in the future, in the coming months, the coming years. Uh, so yeah, I think it's more of the the, the other factors <laughs> that cause the the demand to shift outward. You know, uh, that that will influence the, the that uh, the pattern. Okay, thank you, Secretary. Okay, before I call on Mr. Jonathan, I would like to respectfully inform our media partners that because of the remaining time that we have, we can only accommodate two remaining questions. Sa mga tanong po na hindi namin ma-accommodate for this morning, maari po ninyong ipadala ito uh, sa email ng uh, sa email ng aming communications uh, team. And to our uh, on-site media partners, you may also give your questions to our staff at the registration booth. We will send to you via email the response or the answers of our resource persons. Okay, so okay, let's call on Mr. Jonathan from GMA7. Secretary, sa tingin niyo po ba uh, maaabot yung target pa rin na 6 to 7 percent growth rate? sa second and third quarter ng taon, kahit may nagbabadyang uh, El Nino, ano po ba yung ginagawa ngayon ng gobyerno para ma-address yung uh, impact nito sa ekonomiya? To achieve the, uh, the, the lower, lower uh, number no? uh, of 6% uh, minimum uh, uh, target, no? uh, you need to have the next three quarters growing at uh, five, an average of 5.9 percent uh, and to achieve the higher uh, rate which is the seven percent uh, the economy would have the, the, the economy in the next three quarters would have to grow an average of uh, what 7.2 percent uh, so uh, i think um, uh, just looking at uh, our uh, uh, what's driving the growth uh, of the economy? We do think that that's still uh, uh, doable, very much doable. As I said earlier, the El Nino, uh, I think, can uh, the, as as we speak today, there are actually already many uh, uh, efforts uh, across government now that are being uh, 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 put in place to address the El Nino uh, phenomenon, particularly those by the Department of Agriculture. No? So uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, of course, water conservation. I think uh, that uh, is uh, going to be a major, um, uh, um, you know, um, what's the um, response also to, to this um, uh, problem. And there are already efforts uh, um, that are put in place uh, to affect that. So. Um, I think the critical thing here is that uh, the the public, the, particularly the investing public, see our uh, our economy in the years, in the months, in the years ahead to be stable, uh, from especially from the point of view of the macroeconomic, your macroeconomic fundamentals, that you don't see, they don't see you as as uh, taking, uh, you know, uh, being. Um, uh, unmindful of your spending, uh, that uh, you risk stability uh, uh, of your finances, uh, particularly, and again, you know, price, price instability is uh, the enemy of growth. You know? uh, uh, that you don't run into uh, unsustainable debt, uh, that you don't run into unsustainable deficit. And so, 
and so uh, we, we are very mindful of of, of those uh, factors that's why in our medium term fiscal framework we that's a major part of the lens that we uh, that we look at that uh, the things that we do uh, we do not compromise the future because uh, you know sometimes uh, 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 some politicians no, can make things so easy to to, you know, to, uh, to spend as if uh, you have unlimited resources, but if you do uh, uh, behave that way, then you may compromise you know, the, the, the future, and that's what we, uh, uh, we don't want. And, uh, and both uh, the executive and the legislative have been uh, um, Talking to each other, exchanging views, and uh, and and uh, committing to 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 keep that that and, and engender a a, um, um, a a solid fundamental framework for our economic development. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mikael, for the last question. Uh, Sec RC. Um, in your opening statement earlier, um, you uh, referred to domestic and external challenges, both foreseen and unforeseen, that could pose a risk to growth. Just for the record, what risks are you looking at? You already mentioned higher inflation and um, uh, El, uh, the El Nino, the threat of El Nino. What are the other uh, risks that you are closely monitoring that could uh, impact on uh, our growth uh, prospects for this year? Internally, uh the uh, internal factors would be things like you know, you know uh, your animal diseases uh, you, you know as uh, part of the high uh, or partly explaining the high uh, food prices particularly for uh, meat and for animal uh, products uh, was, due, was due to the avian flu uh, and uh, influenza and the <clears throat> and the uh, uh, the one that affected our livestock no? uh, sector. Uh, we have, uh, based on uh, what we are hearing, uh, the data that we are gathering from the Department of Agriculture that is now being addressed, we have the number, the, the cases, uh, the remaining cases of, uh, of the African swine uh, fever uh, have um, and down there are still some areas that are affected by that so we, we have to ensure that that is sustained that those efforts are sustained and we don't go back to uh to to, to, to the earlier uh situation where you know we, we disrupt the supply of uh, of uh of meat particularly those consumed by the uh, large uh, by the, our population uh, that's one. The other one, of course, the El Nino is, uh, I think, the most uh, uh, pronounced uh, threat uh, risk. But there are uh, other also potential uh, supply disruptions no? uh, that we don't want. Uh, those disruptions could happen, you know, because of uh, major uh, closure of national highways or, you know, uh, some uh, uh, floods or, or or other circumstances preventing the delivery of uh, of their agriculture agriculture produce from Benguet Mountain Province Province to Manila and that, that often happens uh, in the last twenty years now um, um, and and then uh, and then of course the most important other important one is the il the um, uh, ill timing of imports uh, because you don't, did not have an adequate understanding ex ante of the supply demand situation. So you did not reposition your importation and your stocking uh, to take, you know, to, uh, to ensure that those stocks are available when you reach a, uh, a lean season and you, and you, uh, uh, you know, hurriedly bring in the imports and those imports arrive during harvest season, you know, those are very bad decisions, right? Uh, and we, so we would want to avoid those. Uh, and we have already put in place a, a mechanism to, to ensure that uh, we have a good understanding of the market situation, ex ante, so that you can uh, advise the government, the, the relevant agencies of government, to make the necessary uh, 
importation stacking ano, before uh, you hit a, uh, a critical point. Externally, of course, the external factors are known to all of us. Uh, events like the Ukraine-Russia war, uh, which, or, or even the, another pandemic that could disrupt uh, supply chain globally, or even in, uh, closer to shore, you know, development in the South China Sea, you know, what, what will happen if you have some, something in Taiwan, for example. Uh, that obviously will will, will impact uh, and, and the way uh, our economy operates because we do uh, depend a lot on, on the sea lanes for our, the movements of our exports and, and imports and also depend a lot for our sources of inputs from countries like China, Taiwan, and you know, so this could, uh, any developments there that adverse development there could impact on our uh, our economy. Thank you, Secretary. And with that, we end the open forum. Molina is po naming pasalamatan ng ating mga resource persons na the Secretary Arsenio M. Balisakan at PSA Undersecretary Dennis S. Mapa. Maraming salamat din po sa ibang mga opisyal ng NEDA at PSA na kasama natin ngayon. Ganyan din po sa ating mga media partners na nakilahok sa press conference na ito ng Philippine Statistics Authority para sa 2023 first quarter performance of the Philippine economy. Bago po kami magtapos, inaaniyahan po namin kayong lahat, lalong-lalo na po ang mga estudyante na dumalo sa Ride with PSA Caravan sa University of the Philippines Diliman School of Statistics sa darating na May 15, 2023. Mula po ito uh, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Maaari kayong mag-request ng inyong civil registration documents at magpa-register sa Philippine Identification System sa nasabi pong lugar. Magkakaroon din po ng forum sa UP Diliman School of Statistics Auditorium sa hapon. At dyan po nagtatapos ang ating press conference. Sana po ay patuloy po ninyo kaming suportahan. Maaari po ninyong bisitahin ang ang PSA website sa www.psa.gov.ph for more updates. Muli, ako po si Ange Icardo mula sa PSA. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Music